Top Deck is a composite product with a profiled steel base, an autohesively bonded foam core and a polymeric single ply membrane as the upper face. It has no voids and no conductive layer directly beneath the membrane. There is a wide range of possible defects and damage that single ply membrane roofs can sustain. A fastening dropped onto the surface which is then ground in by a heel or a toe can easily penetrate the waterproofing membrane. A roofer's Stanley knife is not always secured in his pocket. If it drops onto the membrane, it can easily penetrate right through into the foam core. A dropped scaffold pole can leave a shallow dent or a 50mm, 2 inch wide hole of variable depth through the membrane. If this is 1 inch, 2 inch or even 3 inches deep, it won't reach the profiled deck. Due to the closed cell foam filling every single void between the conductive profile deck and the waterproofing membrane, even such an extreme penetration will not create an entire earth leakage pathway. The standard electronic leak detection forms are referred to as the dry test and the wet test. Both have their pros and cons and are used for different constructions. Here the dry test is being used to check the surface of the membrane for any imperfections, defects or leak paths. However the dry test requires a conductive layer directly beneath the membrane to establish an earth path and create a high voltage spark leak. Top deck doesn't include such a layer and is therefore not suitable. For this reason the dry test is not going to be effective. The dry test has failed to identify the screw hole or the knife slot. Now it doesn't react to the scaffold hole. The spark is checked by contacting an earth point with the conductive copper brush, in this case the deck edge. Now the engineer is trying to wet down the top deck surface ready for the wet test. This requires a film of water over the surface, not a flood test but an overall film. You can clearly see that the release agent on the membrane is repelling the water which prevents an even film from forming. The engineer pulls the chains to the perimeter of the roof to make sure the whole area is within the electrical field. One side of the pulse box is connected to this chain. The other terminal is connected to a convenient earth, in this case directly to the roof deck. The handheld meter should give a very substantial and clear reading when the earth is touched. A lesser signal is expected when a defect is found on the roof surface. The engineer crosses his probes in order to check his meter is working in the opposite direction. This particular hole is quite substantial and half full of water by now. However, the wet test on the top deck roof registers nothing. This is because despite the size of the hole, unless this hole goes right the way through to the conductive roof deck, the hole doesn't register as an earth path and therefore not as a leak path. Naturally, our engineers would have highlighted this particular defect by visual inspection as they walked past it during testing. In an attempt to get a complete water film across the surface, we used a more suitable water supply to completely soak the area. It should be remembered that the water supplies available on sites are not always as good as seen here, and it can take quite a long time to bring the required amount of water to a roof area. For the purposes of our tests, we can now say this roof is nicely wetted. Still the meter refuses to show a defect in the area. On other roof constructions the needle would be quite active by now. Even the larger holes on this rig have no leak pathways and do not read on the meter. In an attempt to prime the existing deliberately defective lap, water is sprayed at pressure into the hole. Despite these efforts the meter still doesn't register the signal. 
This indicates that the leak path is not a complete path and will therefore be very difficult to detect. General industry advice for leak testing a newly installed roof is that the roof should have a few months of decent rainfall or a substantial flooding before testing. Detergent is recommended in the latter case as demonstrated. This reduces the surface tension of the water on the membrane and ensures the roof surface does become properly wetted. Even with this advantage, the wet test is still not identifying this two inch hole as a defect. You will recall that a leak path will not be detected unless it penetrates to the roof deck below. Finally, with the aid of copious amounts of water and detergent, and with the probes being within very close proximity to the defective lap, a reading is obtained. RAM Consultancy does not consider this to be reliable enough to include in our reports.